Previously on Inside Moto America, <laughs> pressure to rise. Jake Gagne, nine race wins in a row. And his ninth of the season. Tony Elias on the Panera Bread Racing Ducati. Dematty Skoltz is off. Baz has crashed now into the court screw. Oh, you guys are the Motor America guys, right? Yeah, okay, come on in. So uh, we've been trying to get rid of these things here. We keep picking them up. Every single weekend, we get like four trophies. Uh, I think eventually we're gonna have to start a bonfire. Try to make his life even harder tomorrow. He's not worried about Baz. He's not worried about Peterson. He's a cool cat, that's for sure. We really hate Chuck. He messages me like every single day. And I hope he'd stop doing it. Stop doing that, Chuck. No harm, no, no, no foul. <laughs> Structurally, everything's good because it's all bolted together, and then, you know, I feel like I have the range to, to ride the bike. The checkered flag awaits, and Kyle Wyman will win the race here. Gagne and Baz up front. Oh, Gagne, Gagne off, the, off track. the track! So we're taking my heart to go wide, and he passed back, and we were an elbow elbow. It was pretty fun. We all banged some elbows today, so, you know, we got a little action today, and that's good. You gotta live life till it's fullest. So if you like something, you just do it 100%. I forgot what it's like to be here after a podium. No, not after being like, that race sucked, we will get the podium next race. Jake Gagne keeps on rolling and extends his win streak to nine races with another double win weekend at Laguna Seca. That was some good racing, you know, especially after maybe, maybe, maybe making it a little boring, you know, in the first, <laughs> this first part of the year, it's, it's getting exciting, the heat's coming and um, these boys are, are really stepping it up and so we gotta do our part and keep working, try to go faster and faster because it's, it's getting exciting. Loris Bass placed second in both races and was the first rider this season to keep the pressure on Gagne for most of a race. It's the first time I, I feel like we are fighting for the win in both race one or two. Definitely the, the best race we had all, all year. The closer I felt uh, I was from victory. Matthew Skoltz got back on the podium in race two for the first time since round three at Road America. It wasn't far off the battle for first. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, we got quicker every single day and managed the podium in the second race, kind of right there for the battle for the win in the first one. So it was definitely a very positive weekend for us and it gave us a good uh, direction to go. Cameron Peterson. Cameron Peterson took third in race one, but fell off the pace on Sunday. I felt really good on the bike all weekend and um, yeah, it just showed, you know, I was able to get on the podium in the first race, which was awesome to get on the podium again and then um, had some issues in race two, finishing fourth was, was not ideal, but left me pretty hungry to come back and just get on the podium again. 
Josh Heron was disappointed in taking fifth in both races at Laguna after gaining confidence with two second place finishes at the Ridge. I'm uh, definitely bummed, but it's uh, halfway through the year now and we gotta get the results. So we uh, just gotta, gotta look forward and finish off the year strong. Teams arrived early Wednesday, and AMA Superbike Racing was back at Brainerd for the first time in 17 years. The monotony of move-in gives the teams a little time to get in the right mindset to compete for the weekend. Everyone chips in, does the, their job, and it kind of keeps the, the circus going. I used to, I, I was the guy that drove the clown car until I became full bodied. This is what team managers get to do this and wipe noses, kiss babies. But I will say, I'm pretty pumped to be here at Brainerd. I know it's exciting, the anticipation is building. It's all in the moment. Oh, hey, how's it going? Yeah, pretty good, thanks. Beer? Oh, oh no. Oh, no. That wasn't supposed to happen, now was it? <laughs> Coming up, a closer look at the chase for the championship. Beautiful midsummer weather was a little diffused, with wildfires in Canada affecting the air quality in much of Minnesota. The sun was obscured with smoke and floating ash from fires hundreds of miles away. With Josh Heron sitting in third in the championship standings, his chance to win it all took a big hit as he didn't make it to Brainerd after testing positive for COVID-19. In his place for the weekend will be J.D. Beach. His last full season in Moto America was in 2019. Here comes J.D. Beach across the line, and he will take his first EBC Brakes Superbike victory here at Virginia International Raceway. As he's been racing flat track for the past two years, This weekend, he won't be running his usual number 95, but a number that means so much to him personally. I didn't pick my number, but I think it, I think that's kind of why it was meant to be a little bit because 95 was taken. And the reason why I run that is uh, a friend that passed away. So it's always special to me. So this weekend, I, when I was driving up, Richard called and a couple things we were going to talk about today. Uh, he was like, "Hey, 95 is gone, so I signed you up as 69." And and I was like, "Man, that's kind of cool." And and of course, Hayden Gill. I mean, that was his number when he was here. And uh, I mean, we're basically like brothers. And then Nikki's birthday is today, so to be able to do that for for him and the Haydens is it, it, great. JD's a family friend, a uh, guy that the, the family knows really well, and to see him use the, the number 69 is, uh, it's cool seeing it out there, you know, that Nikki was, a lot of people looked up to him, and uh, you know, definitely whenever, you know, the family sees somebody using the number, it means something to them. It's more than just a number, so to be able to run that is it, it, great, and uh, I, I think it's given me a little bit of, uh, extra boost I hope. Just so hard to tell myself again just to open the throttle hard. You get there. I know how hard he worked and uh, I'm trying to do the same and hopefully come 
the race, I'm not riding around the tent with the number and I can get it close to the front at least. A little different? Yeah. <laughs> and then put your foot out and oh, slide. No. <laughs> Keep it a line open the while leaned over. Yeah. <laughs> no it's foot? So, it's so damn fast too. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. Riding a 100 horsepower bike in the dirt. Yeah. Just like child's play. Yeah. You get used to it, man. You do a lot of laps a day. You just, the best thing is just do laps. Yeah. A Dunlop tire test was held on Thursday to give the field some extra time to get comfortable with Brainerd. The track cameras were still being set up for broadcast, so with limited track visuals, HSBK didn't realize it was Baz that was kicking up some dirt and almost crashed. Is that you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. What the yeah. I don't know why. Yeah. All I saw was dust. I'm like, what the Got it. I'm gonna hit the wall. Yeah. Wow, really? Track really bumpy, so every time we try a little bit too hard in the entry, we lose the rear. And I just was pointing the wall like 90 degrees when I went out on the grass, and I just had to lean the bike, and I nearly hit the wall. That's scary. You said you think just running out of gas. Yeah. Like on the gas, it feels like it's cutting out. Wow. Maybe it would be possible to the fuel yeah. bar. Maybe. Loris has been the closest rider to running at the front with Jake. The synergy within the team shows why they are so close to a win. Next bike at you. The test day we had done before the event started this weekend was more just about familiarization of the rider and kind of getting some very basic stuff down, getting some of the, the distance stuff for some of the electronic strategies and getting the gearing and that kind of stuff was all we really accomplished for the last, uh, for the initial test that we had done here. So when you got here Thursday, it was more actually starting to go forward with the bike setup. Yep, that puts us key one. Um, he knows the lap count on his own, so we're coming in, we're gonna swap rear tire. By the end of the day on Thursday, we were feeling pretty confident, thought we had a pretty good bike, thought we had a pretty good setup. Um, Loris was feeling pretty happy going into the event, so we were, uh, we were really thinking we could challenge Jake for some wins this weekend. JD said he saw someone leaking oil in front of him. Yeah. And going into one, somebody flew up and there's oil. Like, I got oil all over me, so I think they, they might need to check the track. Copy that. Did you see who it was? It was a BMW, I think. White one or? It was red. I thought that maybe he didn't drop oil because obviously people had gone over it and I just tipped in over it and the bike just started losing, losing grip, kind of like that floating feeling. And it wasn't the eight little block, it was huge. Yeah. I mean like myself, JD, Fong and two more stock guys like literally stopped waving to tell someone. Yeah. Once the track was cleaned up, Skoltz and Wesby got back to working on Matt's new riding style through the corners. I don't know, just kind of focusing more on the exit and stuff. Yeah. Coming wider. But it yeah. feels like there's no EV, like helping me. Like it's EV when I start sipping in, but once I get to the edge, there's almost nothing. The only time the bike wants to back in a little bit is that second half of the upright braking. And as you start sipping in, it starts losing traction a little bit. But once I put it down, it's just that same free wheel feeling. The setup direction that we were trying to find for Matthew, we'd been down every avenue. We were compromising the setup, trying to find that portion of the setup he was looking for, um, so we had to reset at Laguna. Um, he had to change his riding style to suit, um, but I think in the, the longer term, he's going to be better at every track we go to. It's that first 50%, like it just yeah. seems to go like straight out. Yeah. Once I've got it upright, it drives nicely, but when yeah. I the first 50%, it doesn't want to help me like rotate a little bit and turn, it just stays and goes out. The gearing was probably the biggest change for us, otherwise just, you know, small things, a little bit of engine brake here, a little bit of torque change over, over there, but otherwise, yeah, for the most part, it was pretty easy going and just mainly me focusing on where I need to uh, improve myself. We've been working really hard with Jake to get him to recognize that you don't need to take any unnecessary risks because the way that you ride is so good and you're at such a level that it doesn't matter where you are really, you're going to pick them off and you're gonna be able to come through based on your pace. I grab a downshift here in the seven and it feels like the rear is like, like it's backing in, like it's stepped out. And then I, even when I go back, 
flip it over to the right, like it's still, it feels like it's backing in and wants to step out, but like it, it, it almost maybe isn't. Who's going to be the next guy? Who's going to knock Jake off of the, you know, of, of his streak, if you want to, you know, call it that? When you're through the center, is that with throttle or without throttle? More so without throttle. Without throttle, it didn't want to go to the apex, or without throttle, it wanted to push wide. It wanted to, pu it wanted to push a little bit wide. It wanted to run you a little bit wide, yeah. which tells me that the way that the balance of the bike is off a little now, so that means that there's not enough trail in the middle of the corner to keep it turning. So his idea about having to change the geometry is probably yeah, right. I like how you could literally go on the track and literally start a lap because usually the start finish line is in a different place than normal. So you could literally go on the track and start a, a fast lap immediately, which is nice. The more when I open the throttle more, like I want to give it some throttle and the thing just goes, yeah, 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 yeah. How is it a touch of throttle coming you know, as you pick it up? It's not too bad, there's not much grip. It's super bumpy on that cur curbing when you like flick it back. And then you're going over the curbing on the left and you kind of like slide and then you get the wheelie. So there's a lot going on for sure. We tried stuff that we haven't tried all year, different swing arms, all kinds of different stuff. And um, yeah, learned a lot, figured out a bunch. And I feel like we're still just making progression every single weekend. Oh, I'm just stoked I did that lap. I know it, it didn't have many laps on the tires, but like, I'm kind of stoked. Yeah. yeah. You should be. Is it good? Yeah, way better. Like way better. Be I can actually get on the brakes and trail into the turn a lot more. Awesome of Dunlop, they, you know, they're just always trying to keep evolving, trying to keep progressing with their tire, and, and they brought out a few tires that I think they're trying to run for next year for us to try, and um, yeah, unfortunately, it's just one of those things, you know, I went out with the tire, it, it ended up raising the, the back of my motorcycle up three more because it's a different profile. So my bike just had a little bit of a different feeling, and. Um, yeah, I think I just pushed a little bit too hard, you know, trying to give the guy some feedback and ended up tucking the front. And yeah, it's just unfortunate that once again, as soon as my bike touched the, the sand, it just absolutely destroyed itself, you know. M4 will have to decide if they have time to fix Cam's damaged bike or use the B-Bike starting on Friday. Coming up, race one from Brainerd International Raceway. Friday morning in practice one, Jake Gagne was having some fun with JD Beach being back in Moto America. Jiggy Dog's back, I'm good, I, I love JD. Uh, we were teammates back on 600 days in Road Race Factory and um, yeah, he's just, everybody loves JD, he's a great guy, he's in a great mood, he's super talented on anything, that guy can ride anything and I'm, I'm so I'm, I know he's having a good time, he's really enjoying it and like I said, he's a, he's a good guy to have around, he keeps everybody in good spirits. Matthew Skoltz crashed with just over seven minutes left in the session, but was able to ride back to pit lane without much damage to his Yamaha. It was a very small crash. I think it wasn't the, the slowest corner on the whole track. It was coming into the chicane after the carousel, just leaning over a little bit too much, grabbed too much brake pressure and just washed to the front. It was a little bit silly because I, I had the fastest sector time at that point, and I was just like, oh, you know, I can make up more time here. You know, instead of just knowing that, that that was kind of it at, at that point, but you know, uh, you live and you learn. Kyle Wyman traveled to Brainerd to get back on his superbike after missing the last two rounds due to a broken elbow. Despite winning the King of the Baggers Championship at Laguna Seca, he quickly realized that his repaired elbow isn't quite in good enough shape to ride his Ducati. After discussing with his team and Moto America medical staff, the decision to withdraw from the weekend was difficult, but necessary to avoid further injury. Put some new tire again. Front? Yeah, bar. We put the setup from yesterday and I do the long run. Okay. It's yeah. now. You're gonna change over all the stuff? Okay. I'll get the tires ready. Later on Friday in qualifying one, Loris Baz was looking as focused as ever in his pursuit to best Jake Gagne. 
early on, he takes the top spot. There we go. We finally have somebody ahead of Jake Gagne for the first time uh, today or this weekend, I believe. On the following lap, pass goes even faster, getting under a minute 31. It's a strange track. I like the layout. I don't like the walls too close. I don't like the, 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 the quality of the surface. It's, it's dangerous. I think it's a really dangerous track. Bobby Fong was showing signs of progress as he jumps to the fourth best time over Skulls. We tried some stuff with the bike. Sector one, I'm like a half a second off. It's unbelievable how much I can be off in two turns. <laughs> but uh, we're, we're working quite a bit on just that one sector. And uh, if I clean that up, hopefully I'll be in the show. Well, what a difference that final sector makes, isn't it? I mean, that's yes. what we're seeing most time lost for some of these guys. Try to pay attention to whereabouts the bike feels as far as the position of the bike front to rear, okay? When you're in that spot, all right? Because it could be just something that we need to adjust for actual ride heights and so on to get there, okay? Because right now it's a little bit stiffer, so you'll be able to carry a little more speed to get it to that same position, and that'll push on the tire and that hard. Sneak up on it. With around 16 minutes left, Gagne made a mistake and went off track, but was able to save it. Jake Gagne came through the chicane. We were watching through the gap in the fence down here, just opposite the team. He lost it on the left hander going in. He tried to save it, then he lost the front. It's just that the track's gotten warm as well. The tire temperatures are coming up. When you make sure that when you get it in there, try not to fire it in on its side, but carry that corner speed and smooth it through the center of it, okay? Right? Because every time you try to fire it, it's going to cause the tire to kind of pop a little bit, right? But have fun anyway. A few minutes later, Bass ran off track in the same spot that Gagne did. On Saturday in qualifying two, Gagne throws down the fastest time early in the session. Cameron Peterson moves into third with 16 minutes left. For the first time this season, I'm on a different motorcycle to what I've been racing. You know, I actually ended up going faster on my backup bike, so yeah, we just kind of put everything on that set up and we're gonna go race that bike this weekend and, and see how it goes. A few minutes later, Skoltz takes third over Peterson. Unfortunately, I don't know from the crash bike in the first session, the second session we had a little bit of problems. Just kind of have to reset now, go back and fix everything, make sure everything's working right and come back tomorrow. And, you know, I kind of feel that I have the race pace to be a part of the podium battle, so looking forward to getting out on the track tomorrow. On Baz's last lap, he nearly hits Bradley Ward. Oh, and that was uh, almost into the... Who was that? Was that what, uh, David Anthony or uh, Bradley Ward just touring on the racing line? You want the exit? Sorry. Yeah, it's like two women on I'm going to hit you. I could do not. I'll try to get yeah. off track. Go on the dirt. Go on the dirt. And we kill both of them, you know? I went that close from your retirement. Bobby Fong puts in the third fastest time in Q2, but it wasn't enough to overtake his teammate's time from Q1 as he ends up fifth. Gagne, Baz, and Skoltz end up one, two, and three, with Cam Peterson in fourth. front for long as Gagne and Baz pass him going into turn three. As they go down into turn three right off the bat, Baz might slide up underneath both these guys. Dolores Baz on the Ducati can't quite get it done as Gagne gets right back to where he wants to be in the lead and set the pace. But wow, that was a sloppy opening to this race for oh. the Colorado resident and Baz with a mistake coming off the corner. 
Is Cam Peterson going to get back around him? No, and all of a sudden, there's the gap no one wants to see. It's starting to form early. Gagne was getting comfortable setting the pace when he suffered a low side crash. Gagne is down! Gagne is down on the exit of turn number two. You can see now everybody's going to be going every direction. We got bike three, two down. Bike right in the middle of the track, and we've got crashes in turn number three. If you look at the top of your screen, Morris Bass is down as well. Second bike down, turn four. All of a sudden, this has gotten absolutely crazy. When Bass crashed in the following turn, the red flag came out. The guys that are right behind me, they see the crash, but, you know, a couple more riders back, it's just so packed, you almost can't see until you're up on the exit. So I was like, man, I was standing there, and I didn't know what to do, didn't know if I want to move, and then I found an open spot, so I kind of could gun it, and get off the track, and then it was a crazy one. And this crash happened only because we started with cold tires, so I know that um, the grid is not on the, here in this track, not on the same place as the pit lane, so... Uh, yeah, we just spent so much time on the grid. And then Jake crashed in the beginning of lap two. And I thought at this moment that my tires were better. I'm still really angry with that. We checked our tire tempo, it was fine. It's the same for everyone. So why didn't everyone crash if it was tire tempo? The two fastest guys crashed, maybe they're pushing the hardest. I think Baz made a mistake, whether he wants to take blame or not. I mean, he had a different tire choice than everybody else. And the track was a little colder that day too. So if he was if he was pushing on a colder track, even with that tire being warm, I think it was it was a little bit sketchy. While the riders come back to pit lane, Gagne's team quickly assesses the damage to the bike. As Jake shows his frustration with the quick start procedures in place for the circuit. Look at them trying to attend to Jake Gagne's bike on that fresh new Chris Yamaha. They're going to get that bike back out there. I mean, look how he just kind of slid around. He also made a quick swap into new leathers after being pinned under his bike created a hole as he slid. Meanwhile, Baz's team realizes race one is over for them. The bike has too much damage to fix before the restart. Jake's bike is race ready right before the horn blows for the restart. All stations are waving green. This is the restart of Arno Superbike race one. After the restart, Cam Peterson gets the whole shot again. Our second race start in Hono Superbike race number one. Cam Peterson with another good launch, a little bit uh, more cautious for the 32 of Gagne on that one, not wanting to spin that tire. So once again, M4X star Suzuki's. Cameron Peterson with the lead. Gagne not up the inside this time. So the South African leads us into turn three, a little bit wide, trying to get a turn. Is Gagne gonna have full throttle and he'll get it? And there goes the 11 up the inside of Peterson. So all of a sudden it's a Westby Racing Yamaha R1 that slots into second place of Matthew Skoltz. In lap three, Fong takes over second, passing Skoltz in turn five. Let's see if they go through this turn five, this right-hander. Bobby's gonna have a oh, look right now. What a lunge by Fong to take the spot. Didn't think there was enough in the front tire for that, so Fong, what a great move, an aggressive move. He takes over second spot. As the race was winding down, Jake Gagne sets another race lap record. Another win in the books for the 32 of Jake Gagne, his 10th in a row. While Bobby Fong gets back on the podium. M4X star Suzuki rider Fong will come across the line and take second place. So we have Yamaha, Suzuki, Yamaha, and Cameron Peterson in fourth. Heart rate was probably a little higher than it's been all year. You know, I was already sitting there and I heard the two-minute horn. I'm like, whoa, okay, it's gonna be close. And those guys you know, made it happen, put the bike back together, and uh, the craziest win all year, but I'm, I'm stoked that we got it done, so. I'm just happy to be back up here and uh, we found our way and, you know, I'm just happy for my crew because uh, it's been a lot of mopey faces around the M4S car Suzuki team. <laughs> <laughs> When we come back, Roger Hayden shares his thoughts on the season. Coming into the season, most thought there would be multiple winners from weekend to weekend. Few in the paddock anticipated it would be Jake Gagne's time to shine. Jake's on a heck of a roll, I mean, and just 
when things are going your way, they're going your way. I mean, you just look at the first race here at Brainerd, red flag coming out after he crashes and, you know, gets to get back in the race is, uh, things are just going his way. And uh, you have to enjoy that whenever it happens because that doesn't last forever. And it looks like he's kind of changed his approach a little bit this year, a little bit more uh, relaxed. You know, when I showed up at the Austin test and was out watching, looked like a totally different rider than me. and. Uh, has so much confidence that you know he can bounce back from anything because uh, just because he's winning so many races. Yeah, I think for you know Matt to come out and be so strong at uh, Road Atlanta, win the first race. You know he's been on the same team for a couple years. I think they you know after the first couple races he started struggling a little bit, and it looks like now they're kind of figuring it back out. He's been quick this weekend, and you know he's consistent. Just sometimes you gotta just keep believing in yourself, even whenever those days mid-season when you're kind of getting that slump, you gotta fight your way back out of it. And it looks like that's what he's doing right now. And for Cam Peterson, for him, you know, it's, uh, it's really awesome to see him have the success that he's having this year because, you know, he's another guy that's kind of struggled and, you know, didn't think racing was gonna pan out for him. And whenever you have an opportunity like he has this year, they don't come around that often. And uh, when you get that opportunity, you have to grab it by the horns and run with it. Beginning of the season to me, you know, the other guys kind of were a little bit more aggressive with him and, you know, he wasn't quite there yet. And then once he got on that podium, you can see now, he feels like in his head he belongs. For Loris, you know, you just after each race, you see uh, the gap to Jake is getting shorter and shorter. Laguna, you know, down to almost within one second. So I think for him coming over here, moving to uh, you know another country, spending so much time in the U.S., a brand new crew, and I think it's, it's finally starting to come together for him. Moto America is not a, an easy series. I mean, the competition is really tough, and I think. That's really showing this year with Loris coming here and, uh, you know, getting some podiums, but doesn't have a win yet. But, you know, this weekend at Brainerd, he's been really quick. And, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if he wins one really soon. But I think for him, everything is just finally starting to come together for him. When Warhorse HSBK Ducati New York announced that Loris Bass was going to compete in Moto America, Ducati was confident he could bring the title home. For the moment, uh, I think uh, we are happy of uh, trying to uh, strengthen the effort from Warsaw or Ducati, put together a, a good team of experienced people because our bike is not the easiest bike to work on, so we need experienced people. I'm pretty sure also Loris Baz is happy to stay here for one more season. Here, I think uh, there are six or seven uh, riders and teams uh, and bikes which can are very competitive. So for sure, the, the field uh, for fighting for podium is, is very competitive here. Ducati is basically sports bike, mainly sports bike, and we built our success story by racing World Superbikes and American Superbikes. So being able to, with the, this uh, Panigale V4, to bring back some competitive racing here is, is important for us, I think. Uh, our fans, our Ducatisti, they like it very much. So, as I said, we'll try to match as much as we can to, to support uh, the racing effort here. When we return, Hono Superbike Race 2 from Brainerd International Raceway in Brainerd, Minnesota. Sunday was a beautiful day as the smoke from the wildfires cleared for a needed break from the ash-filled skies. Start, you got them all back except for one four and eight six. All yours, sir. Loris Baz had his work cut out for him as he started back in 10th because he didn't finish race one. Clutch is out and we're away. Oh, good launch from Bobby Fong. 
But it looked like he had a bit of a hesitation. Oh, oh God, they up and out of the saddle. Yep, got up and out of it, just like we saw yesterday. A little bit loose off the start. Bobby Fong gets a great start and does his best not to let Gagne run away. You're going to look back a little further and see the improvements that Baz is making coming from 10th on the grid. You're going to see that Ducati as it looks like he's trying to go under his friend Hector Barbera there. Not going to make it. Gagne is going to lead him through. Fong trying to go with him. Skultz, Peterson, Barbera there in fifth. And then it's going to be J.D. Beach and Loris Baz. After lap one, Baz has already moved up to sixth. And in lap three, catches Skultz in fourth. Oh. Big move from Baz as he gets close to Skultz and just kind of gently nudges his way through there in turn number five. Big committed pass. It's Baz, he's looking to get to the front. He's always an uh, aggressive rider. He rides well, he breaks late, so you're always in for some dashes when you're with Baz. <laughs> in turn three, on the following lap, Baz overtakes Cam Peterson to move into third and sets his sights on Fong. Cam gets a little bit loose to see if this opens the door for Baz. It does, just that little bit of a momentum killer for Cam Peterson as they come out of turn three. And, and Baz is able to make that position in turn four. Let's see if he can start chasing Hanny there. Guys, talking to Loris Baz yesterday, the bike was pretty damaged and they wanted to really take some time to go through it and repair it to its full potential. So he is on the second bike today. They were able to replicate the settings from the first bike. Anytime you switch bikes, there's always that big question mark is whether or not it's going to feel the same to the rider. So you do your best to try to get exactly everything prepared the same, make sure all the suspension settings are the same. The good thing is, is after going through an entire day on the backup bike today, Loris feels like they're absolutely identical. If we end up in a situation that we need the backup bike again, we know it's the same thing and we can plug it in and go racing. Fong was running solid in second until he made a mistake at the end of lap seven. We're going to start seeing some things move around. You know, it looks like someone ran off there. Oh, is that, that Bobby, Bobby Fong? Fong. Oh, so Bobby man. Fong ran off in turn number 12. That's going to hand second place to Loris Baz. So Fong gathers it up, comes ahead on the track just ahead of J.D. Beach. So now, after a solid second place run for Bobby Fong, he makes a mistake, and now he's got a lot of work to do. Still in second, Baz wasn't able to pull away from Skoltz and Peterson. In lap 11, Skoltz tracks him down. Jake Gagne with a 7.6 second lead, so these riders have chipped away at the lead that Gagne's managing, and it's Baz Skoltz Peterson with Fong in fifth, ahead of J.D. Beach, Hector Barber, Jake Lewis, Corey Alexander, and Wyatt Fair. Mm, look at Matthew, he's gonna have a go, Greg. He's having a look, he's and he's gonna make it. that pass. Now, Matthew Skoltz runs second gear all the way around that big, long right. And what you'll see Loris do, Loris comes into there and runs second all the way around right to the point where it tightens up, and he back shifts it into first. So Matthew, I'm sure, studied that, realized that if, if Baz does that extra little downshift back to first gear, he's going to be able to carry that roll speed up underneath Baz, and that's exactly what he was able to do there. Loris coming from the world superbike paddock, you know, he was seen as this guy that was, you know, a little bit above us, you know, racing here. Yeah, so it's always nice to race with somebody who's been at the front of the World Super Superbark stage, you know, and is known throughout the whole world as a brilliant, talented rider, you know, and kind of being able to show that I'm just as good. Gagne gets his 11th win in a row and breaks the win streak record set previously by both Cameron Bobier and Josh Hayes. Jake Gagne. Pointing to his crew, saying, yeah, we got another one. On to the front straightaway we go. Wheel in the air, kind of. Shaking the number one, and Gagne with another victory. Does the double here at Brainerd International Raceway. Skultz will come home in second. Loris Baz will get the Ducati on the podium ahead of Bobby Fong in fourth. The cool down lap on Sunday, that's the nicest part of the weekend, is just rolling around and, and know a job well done. And uh, this place was packed, so it was really good, especially after a lot of years of not coming here, no, no super bikes here, that um, the fans showed up. They did a great job, a bunch of great people up in this part of the country. It's cool to come up and race here. It's my first time in the state. Thanks to all the fans for coming out, supporting us. All the races have been awesome this year. We've had great turnouts, and after the you know last year and all the stuff going on, I think everybody's excited to get back to the races, get back with their family and their friends, and have some fun. So. Uh, yeah, looking forward to the rest of the year. I was hoping that um, someone can start in front of Jake like yesterday and make him lose time, but it didn't happen. When I was P2, uh, the gap was already five seconds. So after what happened yesterday, it's um, the best we could do. And we move forward. We try to sort the harm that I heard a little bit yesterday uh, in the next week before Pittsburgh. And we, we try again there. 
uh, so it's very difficult to pass Baz. The bike's very quick in a straight line, he's good on the brakes. Um, so Matthew had to kind of pass a, a, a place that isn't usually used for passing and then make a bit of a gap. So I think he, he really rode the race smart. Once he got in front, he had pressure the whole rest of the race. So um, yeah, I'm really happy with his, um, his, his heart, really. We kind of touched, my elbow touched his front, front tire, but it's not aggressive. I mean, it, it, it is an aggressive move, but it's not something that you wouldn't expect. You know, a little bit of touching is fine, as long as you don't hit someone hard and push them off the line or you both run high wide, you know, rubbing is racing. To be in a constant battle for second and third the whole time and still being there in the battle for second at the end, even though we ended up third, is, is always definitely a, a positive for the weekend. And to end the second race on that note is always a good thing because you kind of come out of the weekend in a better mood. Coming up, a look ahead at pit rays for round seven. Jake Gagne shows his dominance with another double victory and record-setting win streak. But his margin of victory continues to grow smaller as the rest of the class is as motivated as ever to catch him. After the weekend, Gagne maintains the championship points lead with Matthew Skoltz in second. A consistent performance from Cameron Peterson moves him up to third in points. After Heron's absence, he drops to fourth, while Bobby Fong moves up to fifth overall after getting back on the podium. The upcoming round at Pittsburgh International Race Complex will be the time for teams and riders to truly show what they're made of as this season winds down. The last three rounds, Pittsburgh, Jersey and Barber, which in the past have been really good tracks for me. I think it suits the Yamaha bike too. The, you know, there's a lot of edge of the tire riding. So, you know, I kind of feel like we've come on strong in the last two rounds. So I see the carry on moving in this uh, direction. I still, I've still got Alabama circled on my calendar. I, I can't wait to get to that track. I think it's going to be good for us. I was really bummed for uh, Loris. I was really happy to see those guys step up this weekend. It was so good to see him right there again at Jake's heels. I'm really looking forward to the day when those two can actually get together and have a proper, you know, race long duel, maybe some extended passing sequences. To be honest, my expectation every weekend is to win races. So for sure, coming into, into pit race, I do think that uh, we're expecting to win at least one of them. So I, I do think we'll win one. It's really hard to nail something down that's, that somebody's got to be here in a day. And uh, I knew JD would be super happy about the opportunity because uh, you know he's been struggling a bit in the flat track, but I knew it'd also be a big challenge for him because he hasn't done anything but turn left for a year and a half now. We're people before motorcycle racers, you know, and uh, there's a lot to life, and I'm just glad that I get to share share the experience with amazing people, amazing teams. I mean, even all the guys, you know, all the guys that are on the same track, rubbing elbows. We all, we're all got good camaraderie, and we're all buddies, and we're all because um, you gotta, you know, you gotta step back and know that this is, you know, it's a dangerous game. Anything can happen, and we've seen crazy, crazy stuff happen all our careers. So we gotta savor the day, savor the moment, and. Um, Again, we're, we're here because we enjoy it, so that's all there is to it. For Jake Gagne, his first Superbike Championship title is within reach, with only three rounds left this season. The rest of the field has just eight more opportunities to grit up and fight Gagne for a win. It's coming. It's coming, you know. I, I'm, I don't think I'll be very satisfied if I leave the season without at least one race under my belt. Only time will tell if anyone can pull it off or if Gagne will capture the title with a near-perfect season. 